Hello everyone and welcome to this video about standing waves. We've already talked about travelling waves a little bit and we will get back to that. We're just going to take a quick break and cover standing waves. There's a fair bit of overlap between standing waves and travelling waves, even though they look quite different. And there's also a fair bit of overlap between standing waves and resonance, which we've already touched on just a, just a fraction. Uh, first we should probably ask ourselves what is a standing wave. So a standing wave is really easy to demonstrate with our uh, spring or, or, or a slinky, depending on uh, your trademarks. Uh, so a standing wave, we, 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 can, we can set one up really easily by just starting an oscillation like this. So you can see why, where there's this overlap between resonance. So this, uh, the shape of this thing looks a little bit like the, the sinusoidal shape of our traveling wave, except it's not going anywhere. It's, it's staying in one place. It's oscillating up and down. Uh, and at first, you might not even think of it as a kind of wave. It looks more like just some sort of oscillation on our spring. Uh, we've sort of covered that in resonance. Uh, the shape is sinusoidal. It's a bit hard to tell. Maybe if I, if you were to pause the video, you could see that there's a, a sort of a sinusoidal shape there. Uh, each end where my hands are, my hands are moving up and down very slightly because I'm providing a little bit of energy to keep the oscillation going. But uh, in the ideal case, that'd be perfectly stationary. So my hands are essentially stationary and the center is, is just moving up and down. So if I were to take, if I were to make a snapshot graph of this, it would look something like, instead of drawing this out, something like this. So at some particular point in time, my, my wave is, is up. Uh, at, at some later point in time, my wave will look like this. So this is two snapshots overlaid on top of each other. And if the top one represents the maximum and the bottom one represents the, the minimum, then we've got essentially here an envelope, an envelope which covers all the possible cases. Every, every other point in time of our wave is somewhere in between those two lines. So what other kinds of uh, modes of oscillation can we get from our slinky? Well, if I'm careful, I might be able to get a, if this was our first frequency. Here we go. So here we have a very similar kind of standing wave. It's a bit harder to keep going and it's actually quite hard to see on the screen. Uh, it's very similar. It's, it's a sinusoidal shape again. Uh, you may have to take my word for that. And both the ends are, uh, are stationary. However, there's also a point in the very middle of the wave which is also stationary. And you can see there's in, in between my stationary points, sorry, <laughs> in between my stationary points, there's, uh, there's two points where my displacement is, is, is becoming big and small and big and small. So if I were to draw a snapshot of uh, two different points in time of this wave, it would look something like this. And if I try really hard, I, I might be able to pull this off, I might not. Uh, I should be able to get a, a third mode of oscillation. Uh, how fast do I have to go? Here we go. So you can see here, ooh, got to concentrate. Sorry. Even faster than before, so it's even harder to see in the video. But it's the same sort of sinusoidal shape. Each end is also stationary. And uh, instead of having one or no stationary points in the middle, I've got two stationary points. And I've got three points of uh, maximal oscillation. And I could keep going, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, if I draw that, it looks something like this. So there's a few things to point out about this. There are these, these stationary points here and here and, and the ones in the middle, here, 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 are called nodes. Uh, the word node simply meaning that the, the, the displacement of our wave is zero uh, at those points, no matter what the time is. Uh, no, you know, it, it, at the start, at the end, everywhere in between, it's always, always zero. The points in between, so here, the points of maximal displacement here, or, or here, are called anti-nodes. They're just 
the exact opposite of a node. So you can see with the, uh, the three standing waves that I set up, I had to move, the first oscillation was, was quite gentle, the second oscillation was a bit faster, the third oscillation was faster again. So I, I hinted before that our standing waves are made of traveling waves. And so the rules that we've learned about traveling waves um, also apply to our standing waves. The one I'm thinking of in particular is the one that says V equals lambda f. And I said that would be coming back, we'd be, we'd be using that over and over again. We can use this rule to work out something about a relationship between the frequency of all our different modes of oscillation. So let's consider if we call the distance from here, whoops, to here, so the length of our slinky, call this distance L, okay? Then I can say, well, the weight, what's the wavelength of my first of my first wave. Well, it's actually, this, this, this part here, it looks like the start of a sine wave, but it's missing the part where it goes something like, something like this, okay? So the wavelength is actually two times L. So I can put that into my equation, V equals F lambda. Because the slinky is the same medium in each particular case, V is going to stay the same. So I can say V here equals 2L times F, or let's rearrange that, F equals V on 2L. So this is all right. We don't know what V is, so it doesn't really tell us a whole lot, uh, but we can measure L pretty easily. But let's compare that, this to the frequency of our second wave. So again, V equals F lambda, What's our, what's our wavelength in this case? Well, we can see one full oscillation has taken place over a distance of L. So V equals F L or F equals V on L. So you can see this is actually twice the frequency of this. Let's call this F1. It corresponds to our initial frequency. You can see here F2, if we consider the, uh, the frequency of our uh, two antinodes here, is equal to two times F1. And if we take this further, the third case, we can see here our wavelength is, well, it, we get three uh, oscillations, three peaks in uh, one and a half wavelengths in, in L. So lambda is two-thirds L, V equals two-thirds L times our frequency. If we rearrange this, we find our frequency equals three V on, three halves V on L, which is three times F1. So we can see here we've got a relationship between each of our each of our higher modes of oscillation is proportional is is just an integer multiple of our initial frequency, and so that's how uh, all these standing waves are related for a particular length for a particular medium at a particular at a particular wave velocity. Uh, we can predict once we know the frequency of its fundamental harmonic, we can predict the frequencies of all the higher harmonics. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful, and we'll cover this in a bit more detail once we understand how wave superposition works. We'll be able to describe how we can construct these out of traveling waves interfering with each other.